Hi, it's Susan Mershon, the Techie Mentor. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Today's tip is in Excel, and we're going to be talking about protecting the worksheet and protecting sales of information. So um, if this is your first time joining me, then I'll let you know real quickly that I'm actually on Excel for the Mac. So if you're on the PC, your screen's going to look different than mine, but the steps that I'm going through are really the same on a PC as they are on the Mac. So just keep that in mind. So again, I want to talk today about protecting cells on a worksheet. Uh, why would I want to do this? Well, for one, if I share responsibilities of maybe data entry or I share the actual information that's within the spreadsheet with others, I don't want them to accidentally overwrite pertinent data that I need to keep. So what I can do is I can lock them out of cells or rows or columns of information that I don't want them to be able to change. So an example of this would be anything that contains a formula. So if you look at my sales account adjustment forecast document, you're going to notice that columns N, O, and Q have a gray shading. And that's because those three columns contain formulas. So if I click in any one of these, you're going to notice in the formula bar up here, it tells you what it's doing. It's adding J9 plus L9. If I click in column Q, you can see it's adding three cells of information. So these three columns, I don't, I don't want anybody to type in that. They don't need to type in there because there's a formula that exists there that gathers the information that I need. Now all of these other columns of information, I can let them go ahead and type in and make changes to. Now, if I want to really look at my data, I can say, really, the only columns I want them in are these, which is the, the data that changes. All of this information over here is static. In other words, it doesn't change. So I don't want anybody to accidentally overwrite this information. right? So really what I'm going to do is just allow changes in these cells and then of course in this column as well. So there's two steps to using protection in Excel. By default, every cell is locked. So right now, if I was to turn on the protection feature, I would not be able to type in any cell in any worksheet. So what you have to do is you have to turn off the protection or the locked status on the cells that you want to use first. Then you flip the switch to say, I want to protect my worksheet. Now you can protect the sheet that you're on or all the sheets in the workbook. Notice that this workbook has several sheets of information. So I can protect every one of these sheets, but right now I'm just concerned with the source, which is this sheet right here. So again, two steps. You have to unlock the cells you want to use, then you have to turn the protection on. Now with the protection, you can protect not only people typing, but also changing your document in any way. In other words, inserting columns or deleting columns or rows, uh, doing any kind of formatting or filtering. You can actually lock that as well, or you can unlock it if you want them to be able to manipulate your data that way. So there are several layers, if you will, of protection. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to take and select the cells that I'm going to allow them to actually type into. So I've selected those. Then I'm going to use my control key and I'm going to select column P because it's non-contiguous. So for those of you on the Mac, it's the Apple key. Okay, so Apple drag or control drag, drag excuse me, if you're on a PC. So I selected those cells because, again, those are the ones that I'm going to want to change. And I'm going to go to the format menu and I'm going to choose cells. And if you're not on the protection tab, that's where you want to be, so make sure you click on that. And then you're going to notice up here that it says it's locked. That's the check mark. So I want to turn this off because these are the cells that we're typing into. So I'm going to remove the check mark. I'm going to click on OK. All right, so right now, these are unlocked. That You still haven't done the second step because I could still overwrite these gray columns because I've only done step one. I need to do step two, which is actually flip the switch and turn the protection on. And where you can find that is under the Tools menu. Tools protection and again as I mentioned you can do the sheet or the workbook we're just going to do the sheet so I'm going to choose protect sheet and I highly recommend that you put a password on your protection because if you have somebody who's really well versed in Excel they'll know how to turn it off and if you have a password they'll have to have the password in order to turn it off so and if you are sharing the document with others and you want them to be able to make changes you can always share the password with them so I'm going to type in a password 
Okay, and then notice down here I have allow users of the sheet to do these following things. Now, everything in here is checked, which means they can do this. They can format cells, they can format columns and rows, they can insert and delete data, they can sort, they can filter. If you don't want them to do any of those things, then you simply need to remove the check mark. So I know I don't want them to delete any columns or rows. I don't want them to insert any columns or rows. I don't care about formatting so much. But I don't want them to be able to, um, you know what, let's leave sort and filter. But maybe I don't want them to do um, be able to select anything that's locked, so I'll turn that off. And that just means they can't select the cell. It'll yell at them if it tries. So again, not only can you keep them from changing the data as far as typing, you can also limit what they can do on the sheet by deselecting or removing the check mark for the items that you see here. Okay, so now I'm going to click on OK. Okay, so now protection is on. You're like, well, how do I know protection is on? Well, if I come down here next to my tab name, source data, there's a little padlock. And the padlock basically tells me that this sheet is locked. So let's test this. Let's go over here to one of the columns we said we could change. And let's type something in, no problem. Now let me go over here and try to select one of these cells. And you notice I can't even do that. I click, but nothing happens. So I can't even select one of the cells where I would be able to overwrite data if it wasn't protected. So by locking them out, of those cells, they can't even select it. So again, that keeps them from overwriting the data. Now, at any time you want to turn off the information, you would simply just go back up to Tools, back to Protection, and you would choose Unprotect Sheet. And if you have a password, you'd have to supply that. The padlock goes away from my sheet. And now, I can actually select the cells that I wasn't able to, to, to do before because I've turned the protection off. So that's how you protect a sheet. Two steps. You unlock the cells you want to use and then you turn the protection on. I would recommend putting on a password so that way you can keep people out of the document and from also turning off the protection if they know how. So I've hoped you've enjoyed today's lesson on protecting cells in a worksheet. And if you found this of value, please leave us a comment, share with your friends. We'd love to know that you're finding this of value. And feel free to check back soon because we'll have more tips and tricks shortly. So thanks again for stopping by and have a wonderful day. Bye.